and now there, there's some recent strategies of, of um, actually maybe being able to simplify to, to, to two agents instead of three. Dan made the case for three agents. It happened to be the right number, but, but um, it's, it's possible in people who are suppressed and maybe even people who are starting therapy, which we'll talk about later. But, but what about um, simplifying to a two agents? Is that ever something we should do? Yeah, it's possible. Um, and particularly right now in those people who are suppressed um, is where we could consider switching them to a dolutegravir and rolpivirine based regimen that was recently approved. And I found that this is to be useful in that situation I was talking about with the hospitalized patient who comes in with a new uh, diagnosis of medical illness it's renal failure or it's some other, or they need an anticoagulant or something like that, where I really feel like we need to drop the other medications that could be contributing to their illness. Yeah, I, I would agree with you that the, the, um, especially in, in some of our patients as they get older and, and people have looked at you know, comorbidities mm -hmm. in HIV and counting them and, and I mean, some of our patients have lots of comorbidities. I know in, in the South, I mean, diabetes, hypertension, mm -hmm. Um, heart disease, fair, heart disease <laughs> renal disease, um, and sometimes these um, uh, uh, a, a two drug therapy may may be what fits for them. The dolutegravir rolpivirine, um, we, we do have to be careful about the rolpivirine because it does have the uh, uh, drug interaction with uh, proton pump inhibitors and should be taken uh, with food. But it's also a small pill. Mm -hmm. um, no, I think you're right. It's still rolpivirine, and we have to right. remind everybody of that. Right. Right. So all the usual caveats, but for the person which eat, taking food and avoiding acid reducing agents, particularly PPIs, it, it's a viable option. Mm -hmm. And you know, Dan would talked about that conundrum we have with these people with lots of comorbid conditions: diabetes, hypertension, renal failure, where a bacavir may not be the best choice based on our concerns about a bacavir and cardiovascular events. And tenofovir, although TAF has opened the door a little bit for people down to a creatinine clearance of 30. People who are experiencing progressive declines in renal function, I'm not sure that if you could avoid tenofovir sure. that it wouldn't right. be a good thing right. to do. Right. And now right. we have this, you know, two giant fully powered studies looking that you can safely switch people to dolutegravir rolpivirine. Yeah, I mean, you know, Joe mentioned the magic number and we, we hit on three drugs because we started out with two relatively weak drugs, drugs and added right. a third drug, which was very potent. And we, there have been a, attempts over the years to look at some two drug regimens, but now we finally really have two drug regimens that are highly effective, at least for maintenance. We're still exploring it for initial therapy. And I think we have to start asking, well, if two drugs work, then why do you need that third drug? And is there some uh, as yet unproven advantage long term to being on less drug if you don't really need that third agent uh, as well tolerated as it may be to sustain virologic suppression? I mean, that is one issue with the, the studies that we've had simplifying to two drugs. Um, Maybe because they're shorter term, meaning you know, 48 or 96 weeks, they they really haven't shown much in the way of a toxicity advantage. Right. Or, uh, but but it's possible over a very long period of time that advantage would come up. And and until recently, most of that's been boosted PI3 yeah, right. TC based regimens. Fair point. So no single tablets Fair and point. all the baggage that comes with the boosters. Mm -hmm.